Hey guys, this is Echo Soundworks with ADSR, and you are checking out a first look video slash review slash tutorial, I guess, of the new plugin by both Waves and Infected Mushroom. It's called the Infected Mushroom Pusher, or the Impusher, I guess, is the short hand way of describing it now this to me i'm just gonna get this out of the way this is like the sausage fattener on steroids let's just describe it first like that all of us know what the sausage fattener is it's a thing that dj carnage doesn't know what the hell it does and uh it's this is basically the sausage fattener but with more controls so it's not for dj carnage i should really stop ripping on that poor guy but anyway um, yeah, this is the plugin right here, and we're going to be doing a test, and I'm going to just briefly talk about what the Impusher does. So, like I said, it's by Waves. It will come with both a mono and a stereo version, and it's kind of like the sausage fattener on steroids. So, its primary use, I would say, is going to be on a mix bus or a master bus or maybe a group bus. You can obviously use this on individual channels or individual tracks to fatten things up, like important elements of the mix. But its intended purpose is definitely more to kind of get a glued together, good sounding mix. Now, that's where I think it excels is if you just have a mix that you want to go check on a car speaker or you want to send out to some friends or peers, throw on this and it kind of gives like I'm putting this in bunny ears. You can't obviously see it, but it gives it kind of a mastered feeling and it takes no time at all. So it's, it's a pretty cool plugin. So what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be checking out these tracks right here. And what we have is a little trap beat. And it is the screen one has no chain on it. And why I labeled it no chain is it was just bounced out with nothing on the master bus. No limiting, no compression, no nothing. If you guys, if you guys watch my videos, you know that I uh, put some stuff on my master bus. And it's usually an, a combination of a compressor, sausage fattener, limiter, isotope, stereo imaging. And then I'll usually have a multimeter. So this is just the raw mix and uh, it looks like there's no clipping, which is good. And then we have old chain. Now, this is the chain that I use a lot in my videos. So it has a, uh, not necessarily a mastered chain on it. I don't want to call it that, but it has some plugins on the master bus. Going to be increasing the volume and the RMS of the whole track. Then we have this that same track bounced out with the M pusher. And I just messed around with it to guess sound I like. So without further ado, let's check these tracks out. So here's no chain. This is just a raw mix. All right, so for the first five bars there, I was peaking at about negative 0.3 decibels. And now let's listen to that same track, same section here. And we're going to, this is using, or we're going to be looking at the old chain, which is a combination of, I think it was a Waves API compressor, a uh, instance of sausage fattener, a isotope stereo widening, and then it was the sausage fattener. So let's listen to that. So it's obviously way louder. But let's compare this now to the Impusher. So this was a combination of four, maybe five plugins even. And this is just one. All right, so the Impusher one is louder, and I didn't even push it that hard. So the uh, the chain here, this blue track, this is something that I put on, I've put on my tracks or a variation of for a very long time, and I do it just to get commercial volume before things are mastered. And the Impusher, I, I gotta say, I'm I'm impressed with what it did. It's still musical. I didn't destroy the quality of my track. It's not so loud that it's just there's no life, but it was really easy to do. So without further ado, let's actually. I don't know why I'm saying that further ado so much, but let's dive into this. So just by having Impusher on, it'll actually increase the volume. For instance, if we play this first green track that was just a raw mix without it on. And then on. 
you can see right off the bat it was peaking at point negative negative point one and so it's it just by having it on it's going to do some things now let's talk about these different controls here there is the uh, main control here in the middle called magic and there's the input the high the stereo image you have body push and then low now the controls that i think are ones you're going to be using the most are probably going to be this magic the stereo image if it's on a whole mix if it's on an individual track or element this is going to be different but i'm saying in if you're just trying to get like a quick pseudo master the magic knob is going to be your best friend this low knob the stereo image and the push and then you have these different modes i'm going to talk about so the input is just going to be the amount that of, of the signal that's going to be inputted into the plugin. That's pretty pretty basic stuff right there. So I don't need to talk about that. But let's move over now to uh, we're going to kind of move from left to right here. Let's talk about the high. The high is going to enhance the high frequencies. It's going to add the high end shine, sparkle. So let's listen to that right now. So the really cool thing about Inpusher is that it's it's incredibly musical. It's really hard to destroy the quality of the sound with it, which is nice because if you're a beginner or intermediate user, or even if you're not, even if you're just like, damn, I want a quick fix for this, uh, it's it's really hard to destroy it. So we have the uh, you have to have the input set to on. You can turn these things off by clicking on the in and out. So even with it all the way up, look, let's listen to our an analyzer and see how much high end of a like how much frequencies in the high end are being added so I mean it's adding some gain to those high end frequencies it's probably adding some but it's pretty musical so you can boost that move that around if you're if your track just doesn't have enough high end maybe you take it to another listening medium like the car or different headphones or different speakers and you need to bounce it out send someone or whatever it may be you can add that on or maybe you have a dull sound maybe it's a dull synth sound and you need to add some high end sparkle all right moving over now you get the stereo image control by default it'll be set to zero and this is going this is going to widen the stereo field and it's going to uh it's widen the stereo image it's I don't know the exact frequencies, but it's going to mainly just touch the high frequencies. So it's going to widen the field in the higher frequencies. Now, let's turn this off so we don't have the high manipulate, and let's listen to the track and turn up the stereo image as we go. Uh, Now the reason why it's only gonna it's only really touching the higher frequencies is because if you stereo widen everything in your track, you're gonna have a really terrible phase, really terrible mono compatibility, and bass sounds should be kept in the center, things like kicks and subs and basses. So it's kind of like a fail safe. Now this is something that I think is kind of cool. I kind of liken it to the isotope imager. I think isotopes imager you have more control over, but that control also means you can mess things up. So let's go on now down to the body. We'll touch on the magic knob last. The body is going to add that low mid range to the track. So it's kind of like the high knob. It's going to be boosting, adding some presence to that frequency range. And let's listen to this right now. So let's turn off the high, make sure our stereo image is down, and let's play this. <laughs> Kind of adding weight and punch to that low mid-range er area of the mix which is kind of cool again super musical uh, it goes from value of zero to 20. now the uh moving over to the right we have the low knob now this is one of my favorite favorite things about the Inpusher is it's going to enhance frequencies and it can even add harmonics. So it's kind of like the, I don't know if Waves actually kind of implemented their R base because I think they have a trademark on that or a patent or probably a pretty patent in that, in that example or in that instance. But they, uh, they probably added that element to it where you're taking and analyzing a, fre a frequency and you're going to add harmonics to it to make it, it's, it's kind of like an exciter. And the, if you guys know anything about the R bass, uh, I, I did a tutorial on it a while ago with ADSR, but it's pretty cool stuff. So what you can do is you can look at your key here, and the key of this song, I believe, was uh, D sharp. And so what we can do, that's where the sub was kind of laying, we can use this, and you can set the frequency where the lo low process begins, like the bass note, root note of your key, and then you can crank 
this uh, this up here and add bass to your track. So this is incredibly helpful if you're mixing a track or you're working on a track or maybe you're working with a, with, a, with a singer or you're working with a rapper and they want a song in a specific key and then that key's not super friendly with the sub bass or the sub end or the low end of your mix and certain notes just aren't weighted enough. You can key in the, the note maybe that's not weighted or doesn't have enough weight in the mix or it kind of loses its oomph and then you can use this and push it up. Now moving over to the right here, we have the push knob and this is like your sausage sausage fattening section. You have the push and it'll work in increments of 0.1 and go all the way up to 24 and that's decibels. So if you crank that all the way up, your track is gonna be slammed. You have two different modes, clip and limit, just two different ways of boosting and increasing the volume. So no matter how hard you push this, the output will still always be under unity just slightly so you won't get in theory nasty clipping but let's turn this let's uh let's see what happens when we really push this in clip so i got up to about i can get to about five decibels before i really start to hear some nasty crunching so let's listen to this that's a big difference in volume. All right, let's change it to limit now and listen to this. All right, so around six, seven again. This will be this will vary depending on how loud your mix was coming into it. But uh, yeah, you have those different modes, and it's really musical, and you can really push it. Now, if you crank it up so far, that sounds like that you've done something wrong. So um, let's take that back down here, and let's go back to the input control real quick because the input control has a interesting way of telling you if you've messed up. So you have the uh, it's the sensitivity LED. Now LED off it's gonna be the inputs too low. And then if you have the uh, if you have the green, it means good. Yellow is optimal, red equals very hot. So let's let's listen to that real quick. So it's the dot in the middle. So if we turn it down. Right, that's no different than when I stop it. So if we turn that down even further. Right, it means it's too low. If we turn that up a little bit more, we're looking for green or yellow. All right, so yellow is optimal. And my mix coming into it was essentially slightly hotter than it should have been. So we might actually turn that down. So this is a cool way of if, if your mix is just really quiet, you're gonna turn the input up before you start to mess with things like the body, the push, all that sort of stuff. And if it's too hot, you might turn it down. So I'm gonna turn mine down a little bit. Because this will in theory be, be allow me to do, use things like the push a little bit higher. So let's take this and let's actually mess with this track here. We're gonna set it to D1, gonna add a little bit of low to it. Let's add just a pinch of body. I kinda liked where the body was at. We might add just a little bit of high, increase the stereo image, and let's push it to about four decibels, see what happens. All right, so I'm getting up to a value, an RMS value of about negative 6.7. If you're around negative five, negative four and a half, that's where a lot of like, it varies from genre to genre. But as a general rule, if you're anywhere from negative five to negative six, you have a pretty loud mix. And if you compare it to a commercial track, it's not gonna be a lot quieter and you're not gonna be like, damn, why does this suck? So. Uh. 
So that right there would be nice. And I think that's something that is to get it under those values of maybe under like negative five. Uh, you're going to, that's more of the realm of like a professional mastering engineer, someone who really understands mastering. So that, that is the, those are the main controls. Let's talk about this purple control, the one that I've saved for last. It is the magic control. Now the magic control is basically going to uh, add magic to the sound, but it is going to excite and boost uh, the dynamics and the frequency. So both dynamics and frequencies of everything at once. So it's kind of like uh, just an exciter and a dynamics knob, I guess. So let's turn this up as we play it. All right, so over here to the right, we have this focus slider and we have the dynamics punch slider. Now the focus is going to add a high mid-range dynamics and some frequency processing. The uh, dynamic punch is going to add to the punch or the crispiness of the track as is described in the manual. So let's just listen to this. It's better to hear this in an example. So that magic here, right here, this dynamic punch, it's kind of, it's kind of exciting and do, adding some dynamic processing to the high end frequencies. The focus is a, more the mid range. So what's going on here? It's not super clear. It's just more of a dynamics. I guess it's probably a few different things happening. It's just different types of dynamic processing, maybe compression. Uh, maybe ex you know some exciting that sort of stuff saturation. It's a little bit different though than the body. It's a little bit different than the highs. But this magic knob's crazy in my opinion. You can get some really cool stuff going on with it. So again, it's super musical. So let's listen to this off. My RMS value is peaked at negative ten point eight. Let's turn it on. My uh, RMS value is at negative six and a half ish, and I was actually peaking at negative 0.2, so I even have 0.2 headroom. So it is a really cool plugin, guys. It's only 29 bucks. Um, I actually purchased this. I'm not paid to do this from Waves or anything like that. Just I, it seemed interesting, and it's definitely going to have a use for me. It's not going to replace mastering or getting a track that I'm going to have released, uh, getting it mastered. It doesn't replace isotope ozone, and uh, it's more of like a sausage fattener on steroids, actually. So it might replace the sausage fattener for me, but um, yeah, it's a really musical sounding plugin. It's hard to screw things up in. If you guys have any questions or comments, let me know below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I am Echo Soundworks. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.